Greetings friends and welcome to another edition of Moments in the Word. Today I want to take a couple of minutes to talk to you about a very important subject. A subject that seems to be affecting quite a few people. And just how do I know this? Because in recent weeks I have had several people come to me asking me, Dina, how can I break an addiction in my life? Maybe you, yourself, or someone you know is struggling with an addiction at this very moment. It seems the culture that we live in has really set us up for failure whenever it comes to this issue. But the good news is, is that there is freedom in Jesus Christ. And there are practical things that we can do to make sure that we are living a life free of addictive behaviors. People become addicted to all kinds of things. Drugs, alcohol, sex, pornography, food, and even relationships. It can be a driving force for some of us to be connected to certain things in our lives. So much so that those things control us every single day. And we feel a bondage and a heaviness. We want to break free. We don't want to be under their control, but yet we just don't know how to come out of it. The Apostle Paul said something very important when he told us in 1 Corinthians six twelve that everything is lawful for me, but I will not become the slave of anything or be brought up underneath its power. Paul realized and he knew just how easy it could be to allow even the good things in life to become a controlling force over us if we aren't careful. I think that there are several practical steps that you can take to overcome an addiction. First of all, you really need to be connected in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Without the empowerment of His Spirit living in you every single day, breaking addictive powers can be next to impossible. We need Him and we need His help to walk in freedom. The next thing that I believe that you have to do is accept the fact that you do have an addiction. You know, if I were to ask you right now to give me a $5 bill, If you didn't have a $5 bill, you couldn't give it to me. And it works that same way in the issues in our life. When we come to Jesus and Jesus says, give me this issue, give me this problem, give it to me. If we haven't yet taken ownership or possession of that issue, how can we give it to him? We can't. So it is very important that we look through truth And we let our eyes be open to see the reality that we do have an addiction to something, no matter what it is. An addictive behavior in a certain area of our life, we have to admit it, accept that, so that we can release it and give it away to God. The next thing that is very important for you to do if you're trying to come out of addictive behaviors is to set up in your life some really good accountability. Now here's the catch. What I find most often happens is that we look for people to hold us accountable who struggle with the same issues we do. But there is a danger in that. If they have not yet become truly free themselves, then they in essence begin to enable us to stay stuck in our sinful patterns of behavior. When we go to them and when we tell them, listen, I failed last night and the thing that I didn't want to do, I caught myself doing. And and then when they respond back and they say, you know what, it's okay because the same thing happened to me and I fell again too. Instead of causing each other to come up to a higher level, before you know it, You're enabling each other, and you're really kind of stroking the guilt and the bad feelings that you have, and you're making each other feel better because you begin comparing yourselves together, thinking, well, you know what? He or she can't even break this either, so, you know, there's really no hope for me. Find yourself an accountability partner who has already become free from that thing that you're struggling with. And in actuality, your accountability partner doesn't even have to be anybody that struggled where you're struggling. Believe it or not, people who have not had addictions to the thing you're addicted to 
can truly help you without ever having had to have walked in your place. The Holy Spirit can give them wisdom and the Holy Spirit can give them a tenacity to stay connected in your life to cause you to come up to a higher level. They're willing to ask you the hard questions and they're willing to confront you when you've fallen. But make sure that this is someone who truly is operating out of a genuine motive of restoration between you and God. You don't want some old cranky, cantankerous Christian who has settled into a judgmental spirit. So be very careful and prayerful when you're choosing your accountability partner. The next thing that I believe that you need to do is to cut out every possibility for failure. What does that mean? Well, let's just take a for instance. If you're struggling with an addiction to alcohol, you are not going to be able to come free from that if you're continuing to allow the alcohol to be in your home. And I know you may say, but you know what? My wife isn't free from that and she doesn't feel like she needs to come free. So I can't just throw all the liquor out of my home. I've got to keep it in there for her. But this is what I would say to you. If you are serious about becoming free and you are truly wanting God to do something great in your life, you have to take every radical step possible to get that stuff away from you. You know, one thing that I find great in the story of Joseph was when he was in the clutches of Potiphar's wife and when she was coming on to him and she was trying to get him to have an adulterous affair with her. You know what the Bible says he did? He didn't stay in the room and he didn't say, oh, you know what? I can just flirt around with you a little bit and it'll be okay. No, Joseph ran. The Bible says that he took off out of that room so fast and ran away that he even left the clothing that he had on in her hand, which is what she used later on to set him up. But that's a whole different story. The fact that I'm trying to point out to you is that he ran. If you have an addictive behavior in your life, no matter what it's to, take the necessary steps. Be aggressive to get out of that environment all together. If you have to unplug a computer and disconnect your internet for a while, do that. If you have to go through your home and clean out every cupboard, do that. Do what it takes so that you are not setting yourself up for future failure. These are just a few simple steps that you can take to begin to help walk out of addictive behaviors in your life. Work with the Holy Spirit. Get in your Bible. Begin reading and searching like never before. Because the stronger your relationship comes with God, the stronger you are going to be in every other area to resist temptation. You know, friends, it really is possible to gain freedom in your life. It is possible to come out from underneath that thing that is controlling you. And not only is it possible to break free, it is possible to stay free. Connect with God. Connect with people. Set up accountability in your life and begin to get rid of everything around you that is setting you up for failure. God wants you to be free. And so do I. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next time for another edition of Moments in the Word. Blessings. Mr. Good Intentions, so much I want to do. My mouth just keeps on running.